What's going on guys, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you guys a review of the basement collaboration with Nike on the Air Max 90 London. So I know I am super late with this review. This was a shoe that I picked up right before I left for my honeymoon as they dropped at the end of October. So these guys retail for a price of 140 US dollars or $190 here in Canada. And the official colorway for this shoe is gray fog, clear, light smoke gray, and photon dusk. So in this city pack of three, they first released a pair inspired by the city of Glasgow, followed by Manchester, and then finally here we are with London. But I know all three pairs were quite popular in the sneaker community. So diving straight in, as you guys can see, this shoe is done in a wide variety of shades of grey. And this is supposed to represent the diversity of London's architecture and people. Starting things off with a toe box, so here we have this light grey, almost like a cream coloured shade of Nubuck. This material has a very soft and almost delicate feel in hand. Covering the front toe box area, here we have this light grey shade of leather, and then next to this forming the mudguard of the shoe, here we have a slightly darker shade of suede. On the quarter panel of the shoe on both sides, we have this very soft, very luxurious, darker grey shade of tumbled leather, and then cut out from this, we have this window which forms the shape of a Nike swoosh. So if you take a closer look, you'll see that the swoosh itself is outlined in this Velcro material, and because of that, Nike does provide four swoosh options. So we have a yellow 3M swoosh, a white patent leather swoosh, an iridescent or pearlized version, and last but not least, and my personal favorite, this corduroy version. On top of this, we have the eye stays, which is done in this semi-translucent rubber. And then in terms of laces, these come standard with a flat style cream colored lace, but they also give you two extra lace options as well. Underneath these laces, we have the tongue, which is covered in nylon in this crosshatch fashion. And at the very top of the tongue, we have this leather patch, which has the basement word mark and a Nike swoosh underneath. Moving back to the shoes, so surrounding the ankle collar area, we have the same material that was found on the tongue, so it's that crosshatch pattern nylon. And you'll see there's this cutaway on the mudguard, which exposes the Air Max branding in grey. On the very back of the shoe, we have this leather patch, which is stitched on, and we have the Nike Air branding debossed in the center. Pulling up the insoles, these come with custom insoles as well. So we have this pattern of silhouettes done in different shades of grey, and then on the heel, we have the phrase, real people do real things. So the upper of these Air Max 90s sits atop this off-white or cream-coloured midsole, and then underneath the heel, we have this cutaway that exposes the Air Max unit found within the heel. Flipping over to the bottom, so here we have your standard Air Max 90 outsole, however in this case, this is done in this translucent rubber, and then underneath this, once again we have that phrase that reads, real people do real things. So in terms of sizing, my feet measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, and normally I wear between a 10 or a 10.5 in my Air Max 90s, depending on the colorway, the materials used, etc. So in the case for these guys, I picked these up in a size 10 and they fit me pretty well. Overall, I'd say that they do run true to size unless, for example, you have really wide feet, then you might want to consider going up a half size, but generally speaking, you should be fine sticking with your true size. Next up, from a comfort standpoint, so while it's not the most comfortable shoe on the market, for a retro shoe from the 90s, these guys are still very comfortable, and for just everyday casual use, they're going to feel fine, very stable, with just enough plushness that'll last you throughout the day. Last but not least, from a quality standpoint, so on one hand, while the materials used I felt were very nice, very premium, on the other hand, my pair did have a lot of glue stains and actual stains or discoloration on the new book and suede themselves. So I'm kind of torn on that aspect. Maybe it was just my pair, I got unlucky. But if you guys had similar issues on the craftsmanship on your pair, let me know down below. So with all that out of the way, now I'll show you guys how these guys look on feet. As 2019 slowly winds to a close, I gotta say Nike has released a ton of Air Max 90 bangers. And this basement collaboration is definitely one of my favorite Air Max 90s to drop. I really love how this shoe incorporates so many different shades of grey, 
and then they give you the customization options for the swooshes and the laces, which I think are very nice added touches. I also like how there's a wide variety of materials used on the shoe. So instead of just being a gray sneaker, if you look into the details, you can see all the little details that went into it. So let me know in the comment section down below how you guys feel about this basement collaboration with Nike on the Air Max 90 London. Was this a cop or a drop for you? And where do you rank this one among the three pairs in the city pack? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me a follow on my Instagram account at esco8. Check out my Twitter at sean.go and visit my website as well at seangoca So until next time, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.